someone that we're going to talk in this video about is Rob Lucci. Now, honestly, I have no clue what I'm going to title this video. Usually, I figure that out. Sometimes I do it during when I'm like writing my scripts and stuff. And other times it's like while I'm editing. It may even be when I make the thumbnail. But I think that Lucci deserves to be talked about. Especially because of what's happening in the recent chapters of the manga. So there will be spoilers in it. Uh, more towards the end. I'll let you know when we get there. But Lucci as a villain or antagonist. Not just him. But I feel like we underrate and underappreciate CP9 for what they did in the story. And when you compare them, or I guess for this sake of the video, Lucci to the other main villains in this series, I, I guess you would probably put Doflamingo. Um, if you were to do like a poll, Doflamingo would probably be universally number one. I'd say Katakuri would probably be number two. And I said villain slash antagonist because I don't really consider Katakuri to be a villain. He's not a bad guy, but for the sake of Whole Cake Island, he was the one to push Luffy and oppose him, etc. Where number three, I'd probably give Crocodile that ranking. Now, I don't quote me on this, right? If I can find it, I like I always do. Um, whenever I quote something or reference something, I'll try my best to put it on the screen. And I know I read this somewhere, but I don't know where. Um, but like I said, take this part with a grain of salt. But I do remember somewhere that maybe an SBS interview or something that Otis said that he introduced Crocodile a little bit too early where when you look at him at Marine 4 him with cross guilds it makes sense right clash with Dofi, Mihawk uh stopping the Kainu etc um and then for number four I probably put Kaido right was one of the fan favorites was going really strong but how he concluded his backstory people didn't like um and then probably Anel maybe number five people love him he's not my favorite but it is what it is I put Lucci probably around number five or number six Lucci as a character he's really strong push Luffy a lot he's a real shiki master right one of the martial arts that's in the one piece universe he's considered a prodigy especially what he did at a young age and to put it lightly he's a character that gets shit done when you compare him to I don't want to say a rival but somebody that's brought up a lot because of how similar they are who's who Who's who was considered to be on the level of Lucci where who's who messed up, you know, with shanks and the gum gum fruit and he was in prison. And it just shows how much the government values Lucci because honestly, you could argue that him and CP9, that they fluffed up more than who's who did, right? Number one, they let Nico Robin escape. Number two, they lost Pluton. Number three, the Straw Hats, they're still alive and kicking, right? And then lastly, that he ended up getting another they end up getting another chance at the gum gum fruit by being able to defeat luffy and he couldn't do that but because of luchi's potential and how good he is right and i guess you could say for the plot and oda right he got an updated position from cp9 to cp0 when you look at some of the best fights right i think this is very object well subjective right i think people have their own opinions but at least for luffy i think luffy and katakuri um luffy versus kaido and luffy versus luchi are probably some of his best in the series for me at least personally because of like the narrative how he had to push past his limits and figure stuff out for those fights you know with katakuri's future site with luchi that's when we first were introduced to gears and kaido was advanced conquerors and rio like i said push past his limits and he had something that he had to overcome and the reason why the luchi fight is my favorite luffy fight is because of the introduction of gears if you guys did not know that gear second it may not be mostly everybody's favorite but it's mine and so seeing that this was the fight where it was introduced it just has a special place in my heart but talking about luchi Lucci's first introduction, the Straw Hats, when they went against CP9 the first time, I, I don't think a lot of people realize that, like, people are like, oh, well, the Straw Hats, you know, out of nowhere, they got all these powers, blah, blah, blah. well, number one, it's Shonen, but number two, the Straw Hats were able to keep up with these characters for a lot of the part. I just think that, well, especially on Water 7, it was more of a, you know, oh, a lot of stuff is going on, there's a lot of confusion, and that they had to fight a defensive battle i mean look at like zoro was able to keep up with kaku for most like the beginning stages in water seven sanji on the train was able to you know break through blue nose um iron body there's frankie and bluno bluno was overpowered and i i believe it was Lucci that stepped in somebody stepped in and saved pluto so they were good enough don't get me wrong and obviously like they got stronger as you know the fight progressed and stuff like that but they were just caught off guard 
but nevertheless luffy you know if we're calling it how it is luffy did end up losing no matter what the circumstances was and you know he got whooped and he had to go back for round two transformation in the anime right that makes anime but it's one of the best parts and something that i love is when characters admit their own weakness and what they do about it in black clover there was a scene with fueglion he said it's okay to be weak but it's not okay to remain weak and so characters when they figure out why they're weak and what they do to surpass their weakness and push past it and all that right luffy admitting that he wasn't strong enough to be luchi and he was thankful that he met them i mean also aokiji but right that Luchi pushed him to get stronger because there are going to be stronger opponents out there and he has to be able to protect everyone, which is why he was able to achieve gear second and third, where during the fight we saw that he boxed with Luchi in base in gear second and third, where there's a scene, um, I've put it in a couple of my videos, but it's like the, at least I consider it to be the best choreographed fight, where it has really good information, uh, animation with how old it is I i off the top of my head i'd say it's at least what 12 to 15 plus years old so i'll play that clip for you guys And then there's also Luchi using the Rokan gun and Luffy falling down, getting back up, saying he'll never fall again. And then, you know, Luchi uses that attack again. Luffy, you know, he eats it. He stands up, uses the Gatling and finishes the fight off where it was such an impactful and such an emotional moment for him. Which this is where I'm going to talk about One Piece chapter 1068 spoilers. So if you guys have not read that, and I guess there's a couple, probably a few chapters before that as well. So you guys have not read um, or not caught up to date with the One Piece manga. I suggest you guys read it, come back, right, and enjoy the rest of the video. But CP0, they are at Egghead Highland and their goal is to kill Vegapunk where we see Luchi you know once they're on the island at last tries to stop him where he ends up using his strongest attack that we saw pre-time skip the Rokan gun and it KOs her in one shot where Luffy sees Luchi as he's carrying Boney and Luchi sees Luffy as well and you know we see Pigeon Guy we see Straw Hat so the question that the community is raising is will we get to see a Luffy versus Luchi 2? And also a question I have is why don't you guys subscribe to the channel, right? If you guys would like the video, subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it because we post anime content all the time, reaction discussions, reviews, stuff like that. But Luffy vs. Luchi 2 is an interesting subject because it has to deal with growth, right? We followed the Straw Hats throughout all their journey since Water 7. Um, a lot of stuff, Wano, Dressrosa, those are some of the arts where you could say the Straw Hats have grown a lot. And honestly, at least for me, right i'm not going to sit up here and lie and i guess other people in the community they don't see how this could happen personally it may be because i'm a zoro fan i don't know but i think zoro and luffy are too strong for luchi and kaku and i think zoro is stronger than luchi i think sanji and the rest of them are enough to take on cp0 but that just could be me right luffy he just took down the strongest creature now i do think there are some people that overrate luffy's strength a little bit because they're acting like he didn't have help you know Yamato the scabbers the supernova as well but there were times where Luffy went against Kaido one-on-one -on -one in base and second and third and fourth and fifth so there were definitely moments that showcased Luffy's growth but I personally think if they were to fight again post Wano strength Luffy versus Kaido both of them fully healthy I think Kaido wins extreme diff but we're acting like Luchi has been sitting around twiddling his thumbs no, this man has been training. We saw him at the reverie. He looks intimidating, right? He's ready to go. And I know that they're not canon, but we saw him in film Stampede and Gold and, you know, what he did and going against, I believe it was Sanji and against Sabo. Just, you know, just want to mention that. Like I said, I know they're not canon, but hey, we don't have that big of a sample size. But the fact that Luchi Lu used his strongest attack on Atlas, that definitely means that he has something more up his sleeve. Like, there's no way he had to go all out for just to defeat Atlas or a robot, 
right? Because when you look at their straw has after post time skip, look at Luffy going against the pacifist using gear second jet pistol, um, using the elephant gun. Granted, that's hockey infused with this giant pistol, but still, those were some of his strongest attacks. And he still had something left up his sleeve. Like Sanji's Diablo Jean, but he used on the Kraken. But we know that Sanji was definitely stronger after the time skip. So the fact that Luffy used the Rokan gun, I'm not worried or anything. He's definitely not a slouch and he's definitely gotten stronger. In the end, I do think that Luchi is an underappreciated antagonist. Like I said, he's definitely gotten stronger. And if we do see a Luffy versus Luchi 2, I think Luffy wins. But I don't necessarily think it'll be a landslide. And if they were to go toe to toe against each other, I think it's more so that the community's underrating Luchi's strength instead of overrating Luchi. Wait, overrating Luchi, Luffy. I, I'm sorry, right? Luchi, Luffy. All right, saying that a lot while making this video, is, I'm bound to mess up. But, you know, even though I'm saying all this, I do still think that Luffy and Zoro, that they're too strong for Luchi and that they won't end up fighting. I think that Sanji's the strongest one on the crew that Luchi can win against, right? If Luchi or Sanji were to go against each other, I think it would be an extreme diff fight. But let me know how you guys feel about this in the comment section below. Do you guys think they will clash again? How do you guys feel about Luchi as a character? Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also hit the notification bell so you guys never miss out on a new video. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and TikTok. It's on the screen in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to unleash your potential.